Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swellwatch on SurfingMagazine.com and I wanted to give you an end of November update right before we get into December 2016 to see what's going on with the swell pattern La Nina. We had some really exceptional surf here a couple months ago and now it's really changed quite a bit. Pattern has come back into the Pacific, it's more La Nina-esque. I wanted to show you though why that's not just affecting surf but also weather. Whenever we think of El Nina we think ah, a lot of rain, a lot of rain. La Nina can do the same thing, but it can also do, uh, obviously, some dry conditions. We suffered that throughout the drought. It can also bring up a lot of wind swell. So describing it in some of my reports on surfingmagazine.com might be a little blah, 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 reading all the words. A picture says a thousand words, so let's just dive right into it. Let me show you exactly what's going on right now. So let's start looking at one of the uh, FN mock models here. This is a really good way to see what's going on with the jet stream, with the pattern that's happening. If you take a close look here, this is Baja, this is Southern California, Northern California. The blue areas, think of those as high pressure. The red, think of those as low pressure. This is actually vorticity, but close enough to actually get an idea of what's going on. So we can see that right now, as we're sitting here, it's, the, uh, it's Tuesday, November 29th, and we can see that we've got these tight gradients here. Why? Because we've got low pressure, this red, that's been diving down south. We've got more low pressure on the way. Look at this bend that's happening. This has been known as a blocking pattern. We've got this high pressure sitting here in the Gulf. As storms start coming out of the Western Pacific, they get blocked. Let's take a look and see how that happens. So as you move the models forward in time, you can see that the storms are primarily kept far to the north, like this one coming out of the Western Pacific. Then they get kind of driven down the West Coast, uh, down into our area. Now this is an interesting thing happening here. You can see a lot of high pressure dominating the, uh, the North Pacific, especially the Northeast Pacific here. And this would be uh, around Thursday time frame uh, later in the week here when you take a look at the uh, UTC time. So the red here, some low pressure. Yeah, another low pressure system comes in. The gradients stay really tight up against the coast, and that pattern just continues for a while. We can see another low that dove down south, or expected to dive down south this coming weekend, keeping the pressure gradients tight, but high pressure would be moving in. Now, the leg of this jet stream as you can see on this side of the high, on the east side of the high, right now is placed over land if we go out over the weekend. But if you move the models more forward in time, you can see that that leg of the jet stream may actually start moving a little bit more toward the, uh, the west coast. So what happened a few weeks ago is that the, uh, this leg of the jet stream was a lot farther to the west. So even though we had a blocking high pressure system in place here, blocking the storms coming out of the western Pacific, the jet stream is placed enough here to where those low pressure pressure systems could pick up moisture and then bring rain to Southern California. That's not really looking to be the case in the near term. In fact, we're just going into the standard La Nina pattern where we see a lot of high pressure building in over the Northeast Pacific, driving storms into the higher latitudes a lot farther north than what we'd really like to see for getting some rain in Southern California and also swells. Taking a look at the swells, we can take a look at what happens with the wind. So those tight gradients we can see are causing a lot of strong winds off the coast. That's causing a lot of wind swell. You can see strong winds up here from these other storms. And that wind swell wants to reform and reform and reform as we move the models forward in time because those gradients are placed right over our area. In fact, if we take a look at some very strong winds picking up then early next week, you can see right here off the coast. So taking a look at why that's also happening, these are, uh, it's a look at the temperature gradients and also the relative humidity. So for right now, just look at this blue line right here. This is the freezing temperatures. And you can see the freezing line, that's the boundary between extremely cold temperatures up and around the Arctic area and uh, Canada, and also then the warmer temperatures farther south. So we can see that that blue line, that uh, freezing boundary line, wants to dip a lot farther south down and around our area. This would be uh, over a lot of the northern states it's more of a Idaho and Wyoming and whatnot. We'd expect that, but look at us dipping into California, down into Nevada, and that's enough of a, uh, providing enough of a gradient here to where we actually keep some cool temperatures. And look at those strong winds. Those are upper level winds, obviously upper level temperatures also. But that boundary doesn't want to really move that much. In fact, when we go more forward in time, we can see that boundary really dips farther south. We can also see something else happening here is that we've got some temperature gradient here that's the same as a pressure, similar to a pressure gradient, where it's also a cost causing a lot of winds across those boundaries of very cold air and very warm air. So that's falling into play also with this type of pattern. As for swells, this is looking at then, once again, we're all staying on FN mock models here, a great resource uh, for w free uh, weather models and, uh, and also wave models. So we can see what's happening, another big storm coming out of the Western Pacific today, but that high pressure is gonna keep that puppy up to the north. Ah. 
bad news. Up high into the Gulf of Alaska, uh, here about a month or so ago, those storms were riding at a much lower latitude. They'd continue to build, but you can see what happens. They get battered. So if that storm's coming in, it just gets battered up in the Gulf. There's really not a whole lot of dynamics, and it's going to hit land way far up here, up, up even north, farther than Vancouver. So it's not really providing a lot of swell, but then look what happens. It starts spreading down this way. This is from the winds. You're taking a look at the wave height. That's primarily from wind swell forming along the coast. So that's why we'd get more and more wind swell. We'd see less ground swell. But in the case of some of these, the ground swell would have strong enough, long enough periods to where that would actually outrun the wind swell uh, coming down into our area. How long will this last? Well, this uh, look right now at the forecast for El Nino, La Nina. And we can see that where we are right now, this about at this area here, we can see that we've been in some negative uh, conditions as far as sea surface temperature anomalies across the equatorial Pacific, but we really aren't in so much of a La Nina state as it's just negative 0.5 degrees Celsius as a delta. So it's not all that severe of a La Nina. Now look at the trend that's going on. The trend is taking us out of La Nina early next year. In fact, some models are showing that we could get into uh, another El Nino period. So not a severe La Nina. I wouldn't expect this pattern to last forever, obviously, but uh, I don't think it will really last much beyond after the first of the year. So uh, there is a very good chance that once we get into January, get into February time frame, as we start pulling out of that La Nina pattern, that blocking high pressure system that's really starting to plague us here, maybe that will break down. This is more La Nina-esque, and of course that's because of the equatorial water being a lot cooler than normal and having enough of the uh, the Rosby transport and everything else that falls into play across the equilibrium of our planet to make sure that this high pressure system stays in place blocking. So when we see this pattern starting to develop in the forecast, that means that high pressure may then dissipate. We may start seeing some good big size swells into our January, February time frame. And of course, we might get some drought relief then for Southern California as well. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It looks like we are going to be facing some La Nina conditions for a while. That's what that blocking pattern looks like when I refer to it on my forecasts on surfingmagazine.com. And if you want to follow those, just go to forecasts.surfingmagazine.com. And I, ca I concentrate on the Southern California report, which is a synopsis also for a lot of the state and other conditions for around the, uh, the West Coast of the United States. Also, if you want to, you can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Nathan Todd Cool. And of course, feel free to subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything at all. And uh, once one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Hope this was helpful. Hope that you liked it. And until next time, take care, be safe, and smile in the lineup.